fiction, science fiction, horror, fantasy, crime, LGBT, thriller. You have now entered the house of mystery. With your hosts, Eric Shapiro, David North Martino, John Copenhaver, and Al Warren. Heard on FM Los Angeles. 102.3 FM Riverside. And 1050 AM Palm Springs. Welcome back into the House of Mystery. I'm Al Warren, Mr. Michael Hawley. How you doing, Al? Well, I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, well, not bad. A little cold, but, uh, you know, Buffalo weather goes up and down. We had minus something, now it's 60. <laughs> so oh. it changes so much. Depression, you know, up and down like that. <laughs> but, you know, cold, you sure it's not COVID again. Hey, you're Mr. COVID. You get it a lot. Oh, I had it so many times I can't have it again, I think. <laughs> <laughs> COVID COVID uh, camps out in you. You know, that's, that's <laughs> true. Hang, hang Very true. Spot. Yeah. Well, anyway, here we go. So now today we've got a a writer with us, and uh, looks like she's writing into uh, some some murderous sort of stuff. No, I will find out here. Um, Caitlin Marie Peterson, and her new book is Cold Sweat. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Nice speaking with you, Caitlin. Now this book. Um, so what's a what's a nice girl like you writing violent stuff like this for <laughs> <laughs> well it's a it's got a lot of romance in it which is more my speed but i i do like i've always enjoyed reading romance and mystery so that's why i wanted to combine the two so it's kind of like it um it's a little equal <laughs> so you like romance and killing so you like so <laughs> you like killing the boyfriends off <laughs> So you like true crime, true crime like us? Yeah, yeah. I I've been binge watching Criminal Minds, so what what that will tell you? <laughs> wow. This this book. Okay. So now your main character is what Isabel Kingston. Yeah. And now now, how do you come up with a main character like that? What what do you base that character on? Honestly, I usually come up with an idea, and then from that point, I come up with the main characters. So I knew right off the bat that I wanted to have a lot of romance, but also appeal to those who enjoy murder mysteries too. And I put a little of myself into the book. So right off the bat, Isabel Kingston worked for a magazine, something I was familiar with because I did do freelance pieces. So it was, um, I guess, a lot of her is also a lot of me. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Um, when you're experiencing your character, when you're trying to write your character, I should say, do you do you um, see your character or feel your character, or how does that work for you? Oh, I definitely. I mean, I try to give all of the characters as much detail as I can, you know, like the way they look, the way they talk. And my best friend actually told me that Isabel did remind her a lot of me, you know, um, her sense of humor and the way that she was depicted in the book. She's got, she's very mild mannered, but she isn't afraid to stick up for herself if she needs to. So a lot of that is, I think, my style. Oh, so you go out there and beat up people. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be careful. <laughs> Do you sort of have um, a style that you want people to get about your writing or understand when they read your book? I mean, I... For me, I've always enjoyed reading books that really help paint the picture, you know, so I get as much detail. I really try to paint a good picture and almost make it like a movie in somebody's head. So I guess that's, you know, um, I, I want to make it so that people understand exactly what's going on in the book and they're not questioning, like, wait a second, what does she mean here? Like, I want to make it clear, crisp, but entertaining. How did you decide to to get into writing and what what was it about writing and mystery and all the stuff that you actually um, started doing it? Well, I've been writing ever since I was a kid. I mean, I used to have journals filled with creative stories. It was always a passion of mine. And as I got older, you know, I grew to appreciate other forms of writing, which is 
how I ended up um, graduating from college with a degree in journalism. And I did write a lot of freelance pieces for local newspapers, but at the end of the day, I'm a creative writer. So I dove back into that. And um, in 2014, I started working on my first book, California Betrayal, and that was published in 2021 with TWB Press. And shortly after that, I began working on Cold Sweat. So it's a romance? Romance then? It's her love story. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I think... I mean, I'm not opposed to diving into other genres. I I really think that I'm going to dive more into romantic suspense, romantic mystery, because that is stuff that I enjoy. I, I, do, I like catching people off guard, too. You know, I always try to throw a twist in there. I, I like unpredictability, so I try to give that to the readers. What comes first for you? Is it the um, the story? Do you create the story and then add the characters or do you have characters kind of established in your brain and then you start giving them a story? I would say I come up with the main character first. Like I, you know, and then I've always been a very anal retentive person. Like I, I like to have the beginning, middle and end all planned out before I actually begin writing. So yeah, I would say I have the story planned out and the characters kind of come into play as I'm getting everything together. So I would say the story comes first for me. So you're a big outliner. So you have it all outlined. I do. <laughs> ahead of time and then you sort of fill it in, exactly. right? So are you able to structure your are you able to structure yourself to to say, okay, I'm going to work on the book this week and sit down every day at 9 to 5 or whatever time is available? Can you just sit down and write, or do you have to be in a certain mood or place in your head to, to do it? Actually, no, I, I do it three times a week. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom as well, so I also have to balance getting the kids from school and doing things around the house. So having a whiteboard for me is helpful, <laughs> and I write out a daily to-do list. So three times a week, I set aside an hour to work on my book. Um, so it's not like I'm working hours in a day only because like I have other things that I have to do, but yeah, I definitely set aside certain times that I have to work. You mean an hour a day or an hour just three times a week? How did you mean that? I try to work every day, but a lot of times it doesn't always pan, pan out that way for me. So, and to be honest, I usually end up going over my goal. So I will, I usually end up working like an hour and a half, two hours before I have to get the kids. And then I'm working on marketing my current book. So it's, I would say I'm working throughout the day whenever I have the opportunity. So I forget my kids when I'm writing. And so I get in trouble that way. Have you ever done that? (laughs) No. Well, I shouldn't say that. (laughs) Um, There are times when they were home from school, you know, during the summer, I'd have them sit on the couch, watch TV, and just so I could keep an eye on them, I brought my computer out at the, you know, to the kitchen table, and I'm, I'm writing, trying, I was so close to being um, done with cold sweat, so I, you know, I was like, okay, guys, just watch some TV, and you do get so caught up in the moment, something could go on, and, you know, I don't even really realize it until they're doing something crazy. (laughs) Yeah, kitchen's on fire, you know. (laughs) <laughs> when you're doing this book um do you do you sort of put in um some some subtext or meanings do you have a purpose or is it pure entertainment for the reader i would say it's really pure entertainment you know i thought that this was a really different idea you know yes you read murder mysteries and romance ro- mystery romance but Having Isabel's father reach out to her from beyond the grave, I thought that kind of gave something unique to the book because he's trying to help her solve his murder. So it's entertaining, but I also wanted it to be, you know, different than what people might be used to reading, something new to them. Are you So do you have like a sort of a paranormal um, background or experience? Do you have sort of that to put into the book? Is that why it sort of went that way? You know, 
No, I don't have any background in that. I do have to do a lot of research because I wanted everything to feel authentic. So my publisher and I, are not, my publisher and I worked together with made sure. So I did have to do some research. Um, but I just, I thought it would be really cool. I've watched a lot of shows like the show Medium and I, I watched the little Ghost Whisper. So I always liked, you know, the concept of someone coming to you and, trying to tell you something from beyond the grave. I thought it was interesting. So I, I think that's where the idea came from. And I just played with it. How did you know when the book was going to be done? Like in your mind, cause you know, you've outlined it, right? So you've got the beginning, middle and ending and stuff. How do you know when it's done? Well, I think when I can't think of anything else that will make it complete, like I, I'm a firm believer. The idea was to make this a novel. It ended up being an, a novella, though, because I'm a firm believer. I don't want to just add words just for the sake of adding them. I want everything to feel really structured. And, you know, I didn't want to put something in and then have people say, well, was that really necessary? So I kind of, I do end up going back and I'll reread my work. And if I feel like I need to add something to make it more complete, I will. But it's all a matter of, you know, I, I do end up adding something sometimes. So what to, to you, what makes a good book? I think balance. I think, you know, I like to have a little bit of everything. When I'm reading a book, I like to have, yeah, I, ha I like to have a little mystery. I like to have a moment in the book where my jaw drops because I wasn't expecting the author to drop this on me. You know, I I definitely like the unpredictability of certain books and um, certain stories. So, yeah, I definitely, I like to be thrown for a loop. <laughs> so question, do you have uh, like beta readers or do you have some people that you like to uh, read it to see if uh what they feel about it no i mean i will like i think when i was writing cold sweat i did pass the idea to my husband like oh do you think this is a good idea and you know i think i read him a little bit of what i was um writing and he thought it was good so he he was uh he was pretty much the only one that i talked to about this so and then once i had it complete I sent it to my publisher my publisher was right on board he loved it and so from that point we were working but yeah I would say my husband and maybe a couple of friends but mostly I kept it like on the hush hush <laughs> okay so then but your publisher's editor was working with it with you with it uh actually the, my publisher he's also my editor um it's uh an indie publishing company TWB Press so okay yeah, so we worked together once the once I sent it to him. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Is your husband tied up in the basement right now? <laughs> I'll never <laughs> tell. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. next book. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, he's, he's writing these killer books, and she. Uh, you know, of course, he says it's a good idea. He doesn't want to get you know beat. You know, that's part of the romance. <laughs> that's part of the romance. Yes. <laughs> Yes, dear, this is great. Can I eat something now, please? <laughs> what, what, what do you hope someone takes away from your book? But You know, someone picks it up, picks up Cold Sweat, takes it home, reads it, and at the end of it, what are you hoping that they uh, get from it? Well, I'm hoping that they'll say, you know, ooh, I really want to read more of her, you know, maybe – maybe have a sequel to this, you know, I never rule anything out. Um, so if people read this and they want more of out of the character or the character's best friend who is a detective, I, I wouldn't be opposed to meeting those needs and maybe exploring a new storyline. So I'm interested to see, you know, what people might want you know, um, but yeah, I'm never opposed to writing more and expanding. That's interesting. I wonder um, who was your influences in in writing? And it doesn't have to be another writer. It can be anything from streaming movies or music or artists or whatever. Um, what 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 do you think influenced you the most? Well, I think growing up, um, I was a big Nicholas Sparks fan. <laughs> you know, I. I read um, a lot of his books and, you know, as I got older, 
I, you know, started reading more murder mystery, less like just strictly romance, but I was really in awe of his career. And I really thought, you know, wow, I, I'd love to have that kind of writing success someday. Um, so I think he was a big influence. And, um, and also, I would say, you know, my, my advisor in college, um, Professor Simino, she had always believed in me. She always encouraged me. So I would say she was also a pretty big influence in me writing wise. What do you see yourself doing over the next 10, 20 years? Are you going to keep doing this? Oh, absolutely. I'm actually working on something new right now. It's uh, another romantic suspense book. And it'll actually, it's called Led by Her Heart. And it'll be a part one of two books. So I do have the sequel planned out, too. <laughs> wow. And so a different protagonist then, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, when you do that, um, when you're so you're sitting to do a sequel now, um, are you are, are you going to keep some sort of record of your characters that carry over? How are you going to do that? Well, I have um, – so I wrote everything out, and I know for, for the book that I'm working on anyway, I have all – I wrote the characters out, their background, their looks, so that I can reference it like, okay, this is how I wrote her to be, or this is how he's going to be in this book. And then the second book is not as planned planned out. <laughs> it I'll go through it more once I'm done with the first one, but I'm trying to be more meticulous with this one than my other two books, only because I do have a sequel planned out. So I'm writing a a lot more details um, in my notebook. How do you think you're going to um, progress after each book? Like I'm saying, do you, do you feel like each book you do, like you've done two now, do you feel like it's changed you when you complete a book? Oh, definitely. Yeah. After I wrote California Betrayal, I, I got more confidence, you know, it because uh, my first book, it took me six years to actually complete the book before I even started sending out to agents and publishers. So it feels like at the end of each book, I've gotten more confidence. I've learned more and I'm able to work a lot faster because of that. So if you go from California then to Philly in the culinary world in Philly, how did that work? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Like, so I just, <laughs> it might sound silly. I grew up watching Boy Meets World and the, you know, I've been watching a lot of those reruns lately and Philadelphia just stood out to me and I said, you know, I could make that <laughs> somewhere in my book. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Do you kill people off in the book that you, uh, you know? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. I would say I'm, no one is really, no one I know has, was inspired. <laughs> My mom will, will beg to differ. She always teases, like, oh, yeah, I know I was the antagonist in your first book with the mother. And, you know, but actually no one is really inspired. It's, I do put myself into the book, though. Well, you have to, right? Yeah. I think that um, yeah, a little bit of some, some of a writer will always be in all of the characters, but it just depends on how much like do you feel like your your main character isabel do you think that that character is a lot like you or do you think that it's a lot like what you would like to be i would say she is a lot like me her best friend i actually think i would love to be more like her best friend believe it or not i wrote her friend detective olivia morris to be kind of feisty and no nonsense and I kind of have her say the things that I maybe wish I could say, but I usually hold back. <laughs> <laughs> so it's your escape in a way. You get to, uh, in that character, you get to be someone that you'd like to be more like. Oh, definitely, yeah. And this new book that I'm working on, yeah, I am I try to, like I said, I'm, pre I'm a pretty mild-mannered person. So when I'm writing, I kind of like to have those characters be a little more tough and a little more fiery, which I'm not always <laughs> in that, you know. Um, so, yeah, I definitely write them the way that I wish I could be sometimes. So are you going to have ki serial killers then in your books too? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
know. I haven't decided. <laughs> Which one's your favorite character to write? Well, I really loved writing Isabel. I I have like Say Collins in my first book. She was a little less like me. She was more, you know, tough and she was no nonsense. She would stand up and really fight for anybody. Isabel is a lot more like me. Um and yeah, I I think I think that's where I, you know, I definitely relate more to her than anyone else. <laughs> Ned and Cruz, the 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 romance, uh the the people that she is involved with is it um so is that something that is kind of part of what you or you're just kind of finding uh different uh types of uh people for that you know i would say i think subconsciously i might have put my own love life in a way you know into the books not direct not exactly the way that it plays out but i have a very strong relationship with my husband so I made these relationships, the love interest, very strong, very loving. So, in effect, I guess he was inspired or the character was inspired by him as well, the love interest. I think I did it without even realizing. <laughs> if you have them tied up, you, you <laughs> I give them food and water. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what, you know, the deep, deep meaning there, right? That's true love right there. That's, that's true, true love. love. Yeah, <laughs> clean this water dish. You know, isn't that? <laughs> Where do you get your little your your accessory characters from? Like, do you find people at a coffee shop that you see, or in a grocery store, or you're driving down the road and you see someone? Like, um, how do the filler characters come into your mind? Honestly, I wish I had a better answer for you, other than just to say they kind of just come to me as I'm developing the story. You know, like if I if I want a side character. Um, Someone that's not really, well, actually, a good example would be in Cold Sweat, Isabel's mother has a boyfriend, and I kind of had him be almost like my grandfather who passed away last year, and I made him very similar to my grandfather. He was a very small part in the book, but I had him look like him. I I had, um, I even named him after my grandfather. <laughs> Um, my grandfather was Bill Hannon, so I made the character Bill Henson, and I gave him similar looks, a similar demeanor. And um, so most of the time, though, I I just kind of create it as I, create the characters as I go. Father gets killed by a mugger in this story. Now, when you write an evil character or a bad character or a person that's doing something bad. Um, how do you get into that mindset of that character to make them sound real? It's not always easy because I'm definitely not that type of person. <laughs> um, well, your your husband would say different. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not always easy. But I think what makes it easier is that I do watch a lot of dark shows. So I can kind of like um, take what I take from what I've been watching or what I'm reading. Like right now I'm reading uh, a book by Alison Brennan, uh, Tell No Lies. And so I'm, I'm, I kind of take inspiration like, okay, they need to be a little more evil. They need to say this to make it sound realistic. Um, so I think my love for criminal minds has helped me. <laughs> So what do you think the most difficult thing is about writing? Honestly, I would say it's trusting your instincts. You know, I have an idea and I'm writing it. And, you know, a lot of times, though, I second guess myself. And so that can kind of hurt me when I'm trying to complete a book. So it's I have to learn to rely more on my instincts and to just trust like, okay, you've got something really good. Now just keep going and don't, don't go back and try to fix it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that that stays with a lot of writers for a long time. That never really changes. I mean, you get more comfortable with it, but I think the questioning is always something there and, and research. How much do you do a lot of research to get the feeling for 
the setting and stuff like that and and kind of what um what goes on besides the uh the main line oh absolutely yeah i i for cold sweat i had to do a lot of research because i do have a scene in the book without giving any spoilers away where they're in a courtroom and you know and the the antagonist in this book is very evil and so i had to do a lot of research like um you know the protocol after somebody is arrested, you know, I needed everything to be as authentic as possible. So, and my publisher or an editor <laughs> was really great too. Like he guided me, you know, if, you know, so he was, he would let me know like, okay, we need to make this a little bit more authentic, you know? So he let me know to kind of reword it and gave me guidance as to how to do that. So what what do you like best about writing? What's your favorite thing? I think my favorite thing is being able to share the finished book with readers, you know, hear their reaction to what I created. That's the best part is just be able to share it with other people. So you're on social media quite a bit then? I am, yes. Uh, I actually just joined Instagram. (laughs) It took a while, Ah. but I actually did just join Instagram. And I also have a Facebook account personal and um, an author page as well. So I, I try to keep up with those regularly. Do you have a website as well and all that? What is, how do people find you? Like, where do they find you? Oh, yeah. No. Um, so my website is caitlinswriting.com and my Instagram is author Caitlin Marie Peterson. My uh, Facebook page is Caitlin Marie Peterson Writer or at California Betrayal. Okay. Of course, we're going to put all that up on our website too. So that'll be, so people can find it easy, you know. So was COVID any more difficult to write in than than non-COVID for you? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, you know, you're stuck in the house. You've got, we're in the house of five people. So quiet is not really in the cards for me, (laughs) especially when my kids are four and seven yeah, quiet never comes easily. <laughs> no. I, the seven-year-old, uh, did they? he have to go through or she have to go through any, like, Zoom meetings or any Zoom classes in school that you had to deal with, too? Yeah, at the time, we had to. And at, at the time, my seven-year-old was actually still in, like, just about to go into kindergarten. But, yeah, it was definitely difficult. He... And we definitely, we had to do a lot of the video chats with his teachers. He wasn't always eager to do that. It was, I had to like, it it was a struggle to get him to get on the video chat with them. Right, right. Oh, yeah. No, it's a lot. That's what, you know, and a lot of that interferes in your writing, right? If if you have any sort of a feeling for anything, it kind of will interfere. Are you going to, are you going to take, um, notice to reviews and stuff like that are you gonna are are you gonna be one of those that's worried about every review we get um well I I always worry I mean that's my (laughs) I'm a worrier by nature but um I I always do like to hear what other people think so I I'm always open to hearing reviews even if they're reviews that I may not necessarily like I'll take you know input you know and i'll i'll try to use that going forward in my next book oh absolutely not no if someone gives you a bad review you hunt them down and have them killed (laughs) (laughs) that's the true crime part yeah and if you find out who they are then you put them in your next book and 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 they don't just die they suffer throughout the whole book and at the end they die right you know they're that's i'm telling you this is how you do it (laughs) <laughs> Don't get mad, get even. Yeah. Uh, well, it's certainly a pleasure talking to you. So now, uh, of course, your your newest book, it's a novella, as you say, it's called Cold Sweat. Yeah. And uh, the guest is the author of that book, Caitlin Marie Peterson. So thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It was nice speaking with you. You've been listening to the House of Mystery radio show. To find out more about our guests, hosts or shows go to www.houseofmystery.com show's over for now was it as good for you as it was for me yeah good night
This has been a production of Something Weird Media. I'll be back.